Actually, the very first letter of the Torah is two, is the bait, the big bet of Breshit, that the Lord begins, creation begins with simply two. The fifth letter of the Torah is Yud, is ten, the Yud of Breshit. When you put those two letters together, this is the first observation that we'll make. So they form together a very simple word, a two-letter word, which is the word B. B means in me or with me. Just as relation as in relation to any other word or concept, in order to gain its deep meaning in the Torah, one looks for the first time that it appears in the Torah. For instance, in the five books of Moses, this word B, this very simple to let the word B appears 18 times. In all of the Tanakh, in all of the, the Bible, it appears 159 times. But in order to understand the, the essential meaning of the word, so the book, where does it appear, what is this two letter? That yield, which has now become our, the origin of 248 colors of people in the for the first time. So the first time is actually in the continuation of what we were, what we were studying before, Akidat Yitzchak, the binding of Yitzchak, that after, just right after Hashem calls Abraham twice by name, Abraham, Abraham, equals with Tzedem Adokim, with Tzedem Adokim, with two levels of Tzedem Adokim. Then, and Abraham is now, he stood the, the test. So, the continuation is, Hashem says, Be Nishabati Nu'um Hashem. I have sworn in myself, in my essence, says Hashem, that because you did not spare your son from me, I am now going to bless you and your son with infinite blessing forever and ever. And just to bless the Jewish people forever and ever. And also it implies to give the land of Israel to the Jewish people forever and ever. As we well, as we'll see how this is alluded to. And so this is the first time that this word B appears. So first of all it appears just after Abraham has come to the epitome of his service of Hashem. And his name has been repeated twice. And God is now referring to himself, Hashem is saying, Be, in me, with me, in my, es- my very essence, at smooth, Nishbatim Umashem. If you just take that phrase, Be, Nishbatim Umashem, and calculate the value of those four words, Be, Nishbatim Umashem, so you see that they equal exactly 961. The number that we just spoke of before, 31 squared, which is with seven metal king with them in four, which is Abraham, Sarah, Yitzchak, the whole family, all together. So that's being Mishbati Nurmashem. We just look at this word Mishbati to swear, and I sworn in myself. So it has Shabbat in it. The three letters Shabbat appear in that word Mishbat. And it has another three letters which spell Ayin, I, the I. In the Zohar it says that Shabbat itself is the secret of the I. Because the Shin has three heads to it, which correspond to the three colors around the pupil of the I, which correspond to the three patriarchs. And the pupil is black, that's called the Bat I, the daughter of the I, which is the two letters Bat of Shabbat, which corresponds to the to David, the, the spiritual source of, of King David, the fourth leg of the divine chariot. So all of Shabbat has to do with vision. And the, our service throughout the week is to understand, to learn, to understand reality, to, to try to hear. 
or to hear God within our experience. But when it comes to Shabbat, that's the day of the Nistat Rabbi Yekara Tamarka. We can actually see everything, see the day. That's the difference between Shabbat and the, and the, the, the days of the week, the six, the six days of the, of the week, of the work week. <laughs> so that's Nishpati. That word Nishpati now, altogether, I in each, each component, we divided into two components, the word I and the word Shabbat. Each one of them is a multiple of 26, which is Hashem's essential name. I am is 5 times 26, and Shabbat is 27 times 26. Together it's 32 times 26. Mishbati, which is Lev, 32 is the heart. It's the heart of God. The heart of the essential name of God, Mishpat, and that's B, that's in me, B Mishpat. But that heart, that lev, 32 times 26, exactly equals Eretz Yisrael, the land of this. As we just now said that this vow is the vow for the Jewish people to be born and created and exist and multiply. And it's also, together with that, the the, the union, which is like a medical union of the Jewish people to the promised land. That's the B, Nishbati, Umashem. In any event, this is the first time, as we said before, that the word B appears. And it relates to, directly to what we have been discussing. There's another very beautiful time that it appears in relation to Hashem. Most, most of the, almost all of the times in the Torah, in the Hotanach, that the word B appears, it's not, it's not Hashem speaking. There are several times that it is Hashem speaking. One, maybe the other most important time, is in Psalms. In Psalm 91, towards the end, it's the psalm that we read many, many times in our prayers. It says, Ki vi chashat ma'avatei asagdeo ki adashmi yikra'eni ve'eneo imo amoti v'tzara It's referring to a tzaddik of one, a, a true believer and follower of the Torah, a believer in God and follower of the Torah. It says, He has passion in me because he has passion in me, in my very essence, being what's called his life, the very inner heart and essence, heart means inner essence of God. And that's where all of his passion is. <clears throat> For that reason, I will always be at his side and save him, redeem him. I will uplift him and make him great because he knows my name. When he will call out to me, I will answer him. If he will be in trouble, I will be there together with him as a side. And it's all because of B. Hashat. That, that he, all of his passion is in me. Clearly the first soul on earth, that all of his passion was to God, to know God, to know his name connect to him, to find him in the other. God, we talk in Chassidut, it's like playing a gigantic, universal hide-and-seek again. And the first soul that responded to God's desire to search for him until he found him was clearly Abraham of the So that is the first and, and the primary soul of whom this was relates to. Ki bi chashat vafateh and so on. All of this passion is in me. If we look at that phrase, bi chashat, so we see the word bi is 12, equals 12. Obviously we should have in mind that the 12 which is 2 and 10 also is alluding to the fact that there will be 12 tribes that will be born from the from Abraham's grandson, which is the whole Jewish people, 
based upon 12 tribes. <coughs> that corresponds to all of the other 12s in reality, like the 12 months of the year and so forth. In his book, in his classic book, Sefer's Class of 12, is perhaps the most central number of how all different phenomena of reality relate to 12. <coughs> but here 12 is now a reflection of V. So the word is B in me, and the verb that is used is Chashav, which is passion. That word Chashav, also to translate that into a number, <coughs> is 408. So we might ask and to calculate, is that a, how does that relate to B to 12? Maybe it's a multiple of multiple of 12. So in fact it is. It's 34 times 12. 34 is 12, 12, 2 times but it's also Fibonacci number 34. But we'll see it even more in, in the continuation. Meaning that the word Chashak is 34 times B. TV Chashak. Together it's together is 35 altogether times B, because it's 1 times 12 and another 34 times There is a most important pair of words in Hebrew. One, another very simple two-letter word that equals 12, <coughs> and a companion word that equals 408, which is 34 times <coughs> And those words are Ze and Zot the male and female way of saying this is the unique level of the prophecy of Moshe Rabbeinu that all the prophets, prophets with the exception of Moshe Rabbeinu were just able to say to see things through the see their prophetic vision through what's referred to as the translucent pain and they expressed that with the word so says God Ko, that only Moshe Rabbeinu was saw his prophetic visions through the transparent pain, the Aspartaria Miva, and that is expressed by saying, this is it, this is the word of Hashem. But if the the noun is feminine, then instead of Se, you say Zot, like Zot HaTova, Hashem Tiva Hashem. Much more for a feminine noun, the seeing it and identifying it directly is Zot, which is 408, and for a male, man and masculine noun, it's Z, which is 12. <coughs> when you put those two numbers together, which is 1 times 12, and the female is 34 times the male. <coughs> tov, Tov, like it says, Matzai Isha Matzai Tov. Even the word Isha herself is the diamond form of the the number Tov. And Tov Tov times Z equals Zot. When they go together, it's 420, which is the one of the most perfect unions in the Torah. It's the Yaakov Rachel, Jacob and Nature. Together are Z and Zot. <coughs> So we have, we have to understand a few things. We have to understand the relation between B, which is 2 and two and 10, and Z. Z is not 2 and 10. Z is 7 and 5. They both equal 12, but if we go back to our function of F, A, N, so obviously the result will not be the same. For 2 and 10, it's 248. It's calculated for Z, which is 7 and 5. So 7 squared is 49, 5 squared is 25. And then 7 plus 5, which is 12 squared, is 1 small 144. Together is 218, 30 less than 248. So it's not the same in the function, but the simple value is the same. There must be some way to, to understand the relation between these two words. The way is based on one of the 
one of the most important transformations of letters in the Torah, which is called Akhdi. Before we said that, that 248 is where all of one's consciousness dot to be concentrated upon and connected to. In Kabbalah dot, there's a certain transformation of letters which corresponds to dot, to, to the essence of consciousness, which is to divide, to divide the alphabet, the 22 letters of the alphabet, into two equal sections of 11 letters, and then to pair them in a reflected way. The aleph goes together with the chaf, and the bet with the yud, and the gimel with the tet, and the dalet with the chet, and the hay with the zayin. And then the vav remains alone. And then to do the same thing on the second of the, on the further side of the aleph bet, and then you have a pay that remains at the end, and then those two all together. In any event, whenever there's a, such a transformation, a scheme of transfer, of transformations, there are the letters, since there are 22 letters, there are 11 pairs of letters. It's corresponds within that particular power, that's Firah, that we were, we were considering this Firah of that, correspond to the Sfirot, the eleven Sfirot, can both Keter and Da, of that particular letter. So in our case, B, this word B that we're discussing is the Chochmaz, the wisdom of Da. But the Ze is the Chesed of Da, which is right under it. And the P is Eloke, the in consciousness, in pure consciousness, B is called Eloke Abraham, the God of Abraham, the divinity of Abraham. B Nishbati, B Chashar, what about the Zeh is actually the essence of his soul root. It's more in pure consciousness, the Chesed of that. Zehadaba. That's also where Moshe Rabbeinu is taking his level of prophecy from. Let's go back a second to our 4, 100, 144. Let's treat these three numbers as a quadratic conversion. How do we do this? By taking finite differences. This is called discrete calculus. From such a process, Newton invented what's called calculus. The difference between 4 and 100 is 96. The difference between 100 and 144 is 44. The base, which is the difference of the differences, is minus 52. Meaning that there are going to be another two positive numbers, and only another two positive numbers in this whole series. And after 134, we'll come a number 136. And after 136, we'll come a number 76. And that's all. All more number to the right or to the left this progression will all be negative numbers to infinity. And to this progression of 4, 100, 144 has another 2 positive numbers to it and that's all. So if you now take these 5 positive numbers and add them together you'll see that they come to 460. 460 can be divided by 5 so we can divide it in average value. We divide 460 by 5, it's 92. 92 has to do with another very important phenomenon in nature, in the very calculated the world. Elementary particles are the constituents of, of modern physics, quantum mechanics. But chemistry is one level above 
deal with elements. In the natural world, there are exactly 92 elements in the periodic table of elements. So we see here a very, very beautiful relationship between the way we have derived uh, 248 elementary particles. It's, it's the form of the derivation gives rise in this very, very beautiful way, also from number 92, which are the 92 which physically correspond to the 92 elements of, of chemistry, 92 different atomic forms. Physics is now all subatomic. So from atom and molecule up, it begins already. <coughs> Chemicals, and chemical compounds, and so forth. Right, now let's go back a moment to our word Z. B and Z are the Eloke Abraham and the Abraham of divine consciousness. There's something special about the two letters seven and five, which are the two letters of the word Z. That five squared is the middle point of seven squared. Five squared is twenty-five, and seven squared is forty-nine. Only five is the middle point of forty-nine. When does this phenomenon appear again? At one number. It's the square of A will be the middle point of the square of B. The next time it appears is 29 and 41. 29 squared is 841. 41 squared is 1681. So clearly, 29 squared is the middle point of 41 squared. When will it appear after that? It will appear the two numbers 169 and 239. And 69 squared is the middle point of 239 squares. What about the next time? The next time is 985 and 1393. Is there a pair before 5 and 7? So there's an, an obvious, arbitrary pair, more or less, which is 1 and 1. 1 squared is 1, and 1 squared is 1, and 1 is the middle point of 1. So actually, the series begins from 1 and 1, and then, and then Z, 5 and 7. 1 and 1 equals 2. The difference between 5 and 7 is 2. 5 and 7 equals 12. The difference between 29 and 41 is 12. 169 and 239 equals 408. And the difference between the two is is uh, between 169 and 239 is, is 70, which is 29 and 41. So the very, very beautiful phenomenon about these, about these pairs is there's some mathematical way to predict the pairs. So there is, this is a very uh, sophisticated type of uh, formula, which is based upon a, a theory which is called a formula, which is called Pell's formula. And uh, usually it's studied in what's called meta mathematics. So we a recursive, this is a form of a, of a very beautiful recursive function. That the, one of the ways to uh, derive the function is that, that each number you multiply by 6 and then you subtract the, the number in the series before it. And if I have 5 and I want to know the next number after 5, I say 6 times 5 is 30. Minus 1, which was the number before the 5, that 29, and so forth. Why are we going into this? Because in this series, we see that, that Z gives rise to Zot. The beautiful mathematical phenomenon. That 5 and 7 is there. But as we just mentioned before, 169 and 239 is Zot. So in the very same series, you have Z, and then you skip over one pair, which is equal 70 together. 
The number which is between Ze and Zo is 70, which is 29 and 41. So we have 12, 70, all the way to Ze and Zo with a 70, which is actually the seven, 70 souls of the descendants of Jacob that got down into the shrine. Between the this and this, this the male, this and this the the female. This. And so how do we come to all of this? Because of those two words, be chashak. All of this passion is in in me. What happens if I take these two numbers, two and ten, and make an additive series of them? Just like the Fibonacci series. So 2 plus 10 equals 12. 10 plus 12 is 22. 12 plus 22 is 34. 22 and 34 is 56. Then comes 90. Then comes 146. Then comes 236. Then comes 382. Then comes 618, and then comes 1000, then comes 1680. But those are exactly the, that's the alpha, that's the, the basis of the golden section. And there's something about P, about this word, these two numbers, 2 and 10, both of which are double inspirational numbers. After the first two double inspirational numbers. The first two inspirational numbers are one and five, and then you double them, so it's two and ten. Two and ten is like the two tablets of the covenant, upon which were engraved ten commandments. And from those two numbers comes out the the base the golden measure, which is six eighteen. 1,000, 1,618. So again, there couldn't be anything more beautiful. But what, what is with Seder Medellin, the guy created man in Seder Medellin? At the lower level, what that means is the golden measure and the body and the physical body of man. It's more than any other creature. You know, other creatures are also very beautiful, lions and tigers. But nonetheless, there's something unique about man that there is more golden ratio in the body of man than any other physical creature. And this is the beauty, this is the beauty of art. As the great artists of all times have known. That, that's coming from me, from within me. It well, all comes from these two numbers, Bet, Bet and Yud, 2 and 10. That's where the golden ratio derives from. Even though the, the ratio between 2 and 10 is not a golden proportion, but it gives rise, it generates that additive series which gives the, the golden ratio more than any other series. So, that's also a very, very essential part about our bi chashak. What, what is the golden ratio? Is that ratio that the eye of man, the mishpat, with the eye of Shabbat, has instinctive, innate passion towards? It's the essence of the ascetic principle of, of the psyche of man that is known universally. So that comes from these two, these two numbers, two, ten. So now we've seen many, many a whole uh, spectrum of uh, of phenomena that, uh, that that have to do with our, the, the number of the, of the limbs of the body and the part of the commandments of the two, and perhaps the elementary particles of the universe. And as we said before, even if it comes out not to be the elementary particles, so it's something else about the whole universe. Because the universe itself is called Adam Gadot, the great man. 
So now we're going to talk a little about Abraham. In the book of Joshua, Abraham is referred to Adam Hagadol Anaki. He's the man who is the greatest, the biggest, more than all the giants of creation. So to be an Adam Hagadol Anaki means that he has to be more universal than any other figure and character in the Torah. Because the universe itself is called Adam Gadol, just that man is called Olam Katan. Each one reflects the other, the macrocosm the, and the microcosm. In this case, the microcosm is just this little man versus the whole universe. So man is referred to as Olam Katan, the small universe, the miniature, the micro universe. And the universe is referred to as macro man. And the one person who is referred to explicitly as the great man, Adama Gadobanaki, is Abraham. And even in Kabbalah, a synonym for Chesed, for his, his essential attribute of kindness is Kedulah's greatness. Because it is all encompassing of all of the universe, all the greatness of the universe. Adam Hagadol Banakim Let Abraham have been to him for the eight. So with this we'll, uh, we'll conclude the, the first part of our, of our talk about the uh, about the uh, Yimak and Abraham and the Tzedemad of King and Mitzvah Shem Mahat to think of in the future.